Hello, I'm Paul Lewis Metzger, the director of the Institute for Cultural Engagement, New Wine, New Wineskins. And I'm here with, a fellow, with fellow New Wine leaders, uh, CJ Young, Trudy Sang, Jim Sequera, to talk about our upcoming New Wine, New Wineskins retreat at the Oregon coast. And I'm going to ask them to share right at the outset, what <clears throat> is the New Wine retreat about? And I'm hoping that they'll give a general overview for the retreat each year and this year. Uh, but to start things off, I'd like to ask Trudy, uh, Pastor Sang, why don't you share with us a bit about what they can expect from the New Wine Retreat, or more generally, what is the New Wine Retreat about? Could you speak to that, Trudy? Because you were kind of baptized um, with fire or by fire many years ago at your first New Wine Retreat. So, uh, Trudy, could you start us off? Sure, thank you. Um, when I was first coming back to the seminary and I learned about the retreat and Paul really encouraged me to come. I, my kids literally thought I was crazy because they said, you're going with a bunch of strangers and you don't know anybody. And I said, I know that is weird, isn't it? And, but I still was driven to go because I was so in, you know, interested in how new wine framed conversation and how we looked at culture and the cultural engagement that New Wine really, um, in, you know, embraces. And so I went. And in that, I really was able to find that safe environment where you could press into those hard questions that when you're dealing with ministry and culture and life in general, and be able to safely unpack those without judgment and experience compassion and mercy when we're wrestling through these things that we may not have real strong answers to, but yet through that biblical and viewpoint as, and with mercy and, and compassion, we can press into some of those realizations. So that was a growing point for me. And so I was really, I was just really hooked on the retreat from that point on, which has been a while. And so going forward, it's expanded, it's grown. And now we're looking at a beach setting and we're, which we hope will be really restoring and refreshing and it's family friendly, but also that we can press into that time of really finding refreshment. We're coming out of a really weary and challenging time and and for some of us, we're all still very weary dealing with all the complexities of the of our world and to be able to come into a safe environment and be able to say, this is what's on my heart or this is what I'm anxious about or I'm I'm concerned about or I just don't know. And to be able to be in that kind of environment where people are going to say, I'm going to listen and hear your, your story and be able to share with each other. That's precious. And we hope that that will be a restoring nature of what we can offer at the New Wine Retreat. Thank you so much, Trudy. And, you know, Trudy mentioned that when she came back to the seminary, uh, for some of you who watch this, you might think, well, I didn't go to seminary. Uh, you know, the people are with me, you know, they're all pastors, yeah. Pastor Jim, Pastor Trudy, Pastor CJ. They're very reverent kind of people. Uh, but, uh, I think that they would be the first to say that, uh, to quote one of my mentors, Kurt Cobain, come as you are. So who can attend Trudy, Jim and CJ, who can attend? Is it just for seminarians? Is it just for Bible and theology geeks like me, or is it for others as well? Anybody who has the patience to deal with Paul is welcome to come. Uh, and, and all seriousness though, it really is. For anybody um, that seems like a broad stroke and a lot of retreats will say that oh it's open for everybody and not really mean it but uh, being that where we're coming from post COVID and kind of re-engaging with church and what it means as you know church leaders church participants we're it's kind of cool that we have this uh, shared experience this shared trauma that we've all experienced and so uh, I feel like this is a, a retreat where we're going to have opportunity it's not just going to be about COVID it's going to be about ministry about following the Lord about chasing after him uh, so whether uh, I, I bring people from my church, like church leaders from my church, both volunteer people and people who are uh, other pastors that come with me. Um, and so that's, that's people that will be coming, but I'll also be inviting uh, pastors from other churches. I'll be inviting leaders from other churches, uh, people that I know just as friends in the community, um, anyone and everyone. My wife and I are actually uh, 
looking to bring some of our kids, at least, if not all of them, um, they range in ages. So my 13 year old's really excited about coming and engaging in the conversations and stuff. So um, he I look forward to talking with me, right, CJ? Uh, he's the one that saw that you couldn't put a straw in a Capri Sun. So I don't know if he, so, I don't know if he remembers that still. But we'll, see. Um, well, you know, to that point, though, you know, about like different ages and such, I think it's also different points on a spiritual map or spiritual journey, right? Because maybe some people would think that they can't attend because they don't go to church or whatever, but that's not at all what we're saying here, right? We, we certainly would love to have people who are pastors people who are part of churches mm -hmm. uh members of churches but people who are nuns and duns um they're welcome as well this is this is really as we're going to uh talk about it really a, an open circle for people to engage while we're seeking to press into jesus uh there on the oregon coast it's a retreat but it's also an advance spiritually so cj trudy jim any thoughts about that about wherever people are on their spiritual journey I was just in our home church. Sorry, Trudy. Go ahead. Well, and also too, it's like it whether you're a you know, 12, 13 year old in a family unit, because we want to be family friendly, students in undergrad as well as, as graduate school, but also, yeah, people that just want, I mean, the the what we want is authentic life on life experiences and to be able to share our faith whether you are you know totally sold into jesus or not it's we want to have that environment where you can explore what that really means and how that's unpacked and and be authentic about it and not just put a show on but to actually ask people and to share their journey and jim's going to be really pressing into some of that yeah, let's turn to that. Uh, what's the meaning of this year's retreat? I mean, the title of the New Wine Retreat this year is Talk Story, The Art of Dialogue. Jim, could you share a little bit about that, please? Yeah, I'd be more than happy to. In fact, I think kind of this whole thing came about in a talk story kind of way and more than organic way because... Um, you know, see, I got this email from CJ and Trudy. They said, hey, Jim, how about just kind of helping these little areas? And so, it, you know, it's so these little areas have gone from little areas to kind of like the term keynote. So I'm not the keynote speaker. I exactly. Ooh, I get real, Dan. But, you know, I think, um, I, you know, it just happened in such an organic way. And that's really what Talk Story is about. It's just kind of it, it happens organically. It's not something where um, where you just sit down and say, hey, we got to go through these bullet points. We're going to cover all these things. And so. Um, it really is organic. And I think that's where we are today is because last year, actually, we, um, CJ and Trudy just said, hey, you know what, let's just have a time for people just to, ref just to refresh, to reflect. And, um, and it was kind of during that time where we ended up talking story, if you will, um, in a very organic way. And so I kind of had these small little ideas and they just kept getting bigger and bigger. So, so talk story has become the title and so um but you know for hawaiians talk story actually not only hawaiians but all um, indigenous people oral tradition is very important and so we have this basically talk story is sharing life together sharing people's stories understanding there's value in stories and i love that cj brought up the upper you know the 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 um the idea that you know even younger children are invited he's thinking of bringing some of his own children and so even in my own culture talk story begins at a very young age it's about you know young children are engaged and in, in not only um sharing their story but learning to listen and i think that's one of the biggest challenges is because talk story isn't only about talking story but it's also about listening to other people's stories and receiving it um, one of my kapuna shares um, when you talk story you're 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 giving somebody something very valuable you're sharing part of your life and so um, when you talk story um, kapunas they'll sit and listen because they're careful about what they give out because of the value of the story but many kapunas they say that um we listen to see if somebody's listening or we're listening to see if others are, you know, how well others are listening. And so that's really what talk story is about. It's not only talking story, but it's about listening to people's stories and valuing those stories. And uh, Kapuna is an elder, correct? Elder, in, that's right. In Hawaiian culture. Has, uh, and I loved how your mother would say this. It, it's part of our reflections that we have posted that people can see at the New Wine Facebook page uh, for the Institute for Cultural Engagement at New Wine Wineskins. Jim talks about his experience where his mom said to him, you know, be proud of your Hawaiian culture. And uh, and you're wanting people to own a sense of who they are, their exactly. history and the like. 
and to be proud of that and to share from that yeah. at the retreat. Correct, Jim? Yeah, absolutely. And, I, you know, I mean, especially in conversations when people say, I don't have a story and they, they you know, kind of say and they don't say anything and they let other people share. But really talking stories that everybody has a story. And so kind of really the three, I guess the three areas, if we were to touch upon those areas, are that everybody's story is valuable. Your story is valuable. Um, I think, you know, when, when you invite and ask who's going to be there, I think we all need to be there because we all have a story that speaks into the gospel. The gospel is a bigger story, but our story fits in that. And our story is going to bless somebody. Um, the other piece of story is nurturing and revealing trust. And that um, I think sometimes we want to judge people so quickly when they start sharing their stories. But hopefully this will be a time where we can just learn to listen well um, and, and to build trust with one another. And then finally, gift is a, and a gift is uh, or story is a gift. It's it's not to be withheld. It's not to be just mine. But like um, like Yahweh said to um, and we call him Keakua. Hawaiians call uh, uh, the creator Keakua or Io or Kane. But, um, you know, he, the creator told um, Abraham, I'm going to bless you in order that you be a blessing and your story. Um, the creator has blessed you with the story in order that you would be a blessing to others. And so that's, you know, that's kind of what we're, we're aiming for, but hopefully we can, um, more of the time will be spent with people sharing stories and talking stories and, and valuing one another's stories. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, Jim. And, you know, so often because new wine is very organic, just as Trudy said, you know, here she comes back to school and the next thing she's doing is helping lead a retreat out in sisters, Oregon. It wasn't a paramilitary <laughs> camp, but it was just like, what is she getting herself into Jim? was asked a few questions. Hey, could you help us then find out he's the keynote speaker, right? Am I right, CJ? He is the keynote. Uh, yeah, he's the Kapuna. So um, uh, I'm not the keynote speaker. I'm just part of the sharing team with this. Hey, you're the keynote uh, speaker. CJ but you know, it's all very organic. At, at, oh, at no, okay, if we're going to be indigenous, we can't have keynote speakers. Okay, I know, I know. Co-learners, right? I know, Co-listeners. I know, I know. <laughs> but with, with New Wine, though, I think a lot of times it's something that uh, it's after you've been there, you kind of sense, oh, that was really deep and meaningful. I hear story after story. They weren't quite sure what to expect. And CJ, you shared this many times that, you know, people in your network have come out saying, I want to come back next year. And so, you know, what should people expect at the retreat further to the, what you, uh, to what you've said? And also what do you think they might take away from the retreat? Because people are busy. Uh, this is a couple of days away, whether, you know, it's a pastoral staff, whether it's a, you know, a family, whether it's an individual, you know, to invest this kind of time and not to really have a sense that, okay, it's going to be these keynote speakers and this kind of package. It's, we were joking before. It's not like to have a keynote speaker, but it's really to have a keynote community, if you will, of really building that connection with one are very organic. So what can what can people expect to take away or to even take away? Well, at the at the camp, there's a there's a giant room um, where all of us actually just kind of we get into the new wine, new wineskins collective sleeping bag. And it's where all of our feet touch each other. Just, just kidding. No. Okay. There's not, none of that. <laughs> none of that. No. Um, in all seriousness, the, the, the New Wine Retreat is a, I love the way Jim kept framing his answers to things and by saying things like along the lines that this is, we hope to, we hope to, we hope to. There's a, a lot of structure on, on the weekend um, at the first half of the day, but most of it is like, discussion opportunities context for discussion and Jim's going to help facilitate these dialogues but it's not about him getting up there and telling us how to do it it's more of a all of us getting together and practicing how to do it um, new wines retreats are unlike any other retreat I know again every retreat says that but there's not a central hub there's a community of people who gather together to interact with one another relationally about all these different topics um, when Jim talks about his story and stuff uh, when we go this year, like if you register early, you get to be an honorary Hawaiian after that, <laughs> that first registration. So I'm just kidding. No, but like we have get to have dialogues and share our stories. Actually, I was concerned when Jim shared, you know, your story is important. I always feel conflicted when we have uh, race conversations. My dad's Mexican, my mom's white. I look like my mom. My brother looks like my dad. And so it's all the time a question of where do I sit? At which table do I see? What, what is my story? And how does mine fit into the overall um dialogue about race in, in the united states or the world and 
it's conflicting and confusing, but the way Jim expresses it, the way he guides this is that we get to come to the table with all of our stories and all, from wherever we're at, no, no matter what culture you grew up in, it's not all about cultural engagement or culture we grew up in, um, but from all different kinds of and aspects of our stories. So um, what you can expect to get out of the retreat is um, by the end of the weekend, we're hoping that you'd breed connection with a few people and be able to dialogue about some things. And honestly, we, we're, we're promoting Sabbath rest is really the idea to be able to engage, to be able to take a breath. I've always said the reason I got involved with New Wine was because when I would come together with these people, even when we disagree, I walked away feeling like I I was I was impassioned to be able to chase after Jesus more more fervently, and I felt like honestly like I wasn't crazy because there's other people in this world asking the same questions that I am who care to listen to to my questions and engage with my questions to challenge my thinking to stretch me uh, relationally and biblically in all different kinds of ways, and it's just a a beautiful community, and so that's that's honestly what you hope to engage here again. Don't come expecting to see talking heads engage, <laughs> give you all the answers to things. That's not what we do here. When you come, and I don't care if you're 13 or if you're 95, when you come, you come to participate as a part of this community. And that's the beauty of a new wine retreat to me. I promise there's no communal sleeping bag. <laughs> Thank you, CJ. Um, so where can people find out more information about specifics? Go ahead, Judy. Well, definitely go to our Facebook page or our website for New Wine, New Wine Skins. And in events, there is a um, registration form to link you into an Eventbrite registration. And in the Eventbrite registration, you can design what who's coming, what um, the age groupings that you're bringing, as well as what days you can participate in. Because we understand that some people's schedules may not fit on Thursday evening, um, as well as Sunday morning, but um, as much as you can come, we want people to sign up for, but there is a selection menu that you can go through. And that also designs how our, um, our dining uh, will be designed to, will be feeding. You can also um, design what, if you have special dietary needs, that can be explained as well. We will also be doing housing through that Eventbrite registration, and that will also mindfully be put together so that families are grouped together in their cabins and that we're being COVID friendly in all of the aspects of how we design the housing. And again, where where is this going to be? What camp? This is Camp Wainema, which is kind of in between Tillamook and Lincoln City. It's right on the ocean. So literally, you can hear the ocean from the camp. And it's got an inland lake. There's lots of recreation that we can use that's outside as well as inside. So if you're afraid of weather, because it is in October, there's a gym that we can also use. And there's also lots of other smaller rooms that we can break into, you know, groups if people wanted to have more a focus group discussion, we have those options available to us. And it's a really um, very comfortable camp that um, is not huge. So getting a navigation through it is not horrible. And we just hope people can come and breathe and listen to the ocean and be restored. Thank you, Trudy. And so Trudy had mentioned that uh, you can go to our Facebook page, which is simply New Wine, New Wineskins. Uh, on Facebook, New Wine, New Wineskins, or our website, new-wineskins.org, new-wineskins.org. And uh, you'll be able to find the Eventbrite link related to the retreat. Uh, I just wanted to say before my colleagues share their own closing thoughts, uh, for me, as some of you may know, uh, the last 18 months or so have been extremely hard for my family and me with my son, Christopher, who would often come to the retreats. When he was a, a youth, he would be at the retreats when we were out in Sisters, um, even with his wife and daughter uh, before they moved uh, to another state. Um, they were at the retreat um, a few years ago and I cherish that out on the Oregon coast. And, uh, but my son uh, endured a traumatic brain injury, January, 2021. I wasn't able to be at the retreat last year because of uh, the round the clock care for him uh, and caring for his family as well in many ways. Uh, I'll be able to go uh, this year uh, while the care for my son continues on in his uh, very difficult state. But being with people like 
these friends here puts wind in my sails. Uh, the ocean wind, the relational wind, uh, so much wind is going against me in so many ways in, in what we're having to attend to as a family. Maybe you feel that way in, in your life in some ways, just feel like the wind is um, cultural winds or certain other winds, relationships are just in your face all the time. You need wind in your sails and wind coming from behind you to press you forward. And I think the kind of connections that can come through this, the organic, um, genuine connections of talking story with people, uh, my hope and prayer is that it will put wind in your sails, like I believe it will put wind in my sails, to continue on to advance, not simply to retreat, but to advance in engaging and caring for my son and in caring for others. And so, Jim, Trudy, and CJ, do you have any closing thoughts for those who are um, with us watching this video? There is an early bird special, so I'd really encourage people to register as soon as possible and save a few dollars and invite your friends and any of your networks because we'd love to have you come. Thank you, Trudy. Jim and CJ? Yeah, you know, I would just say, you know, what I love about new wine and new wine skins, and I think it's just from experience, is the opportunity to share my story. And I've, you know, people are always curious about, you know, wanting to know more. and. And over time, you know, serving as on the advisory council, just um, being able to have a voice as, as, as an indigenous native Hawaiian person. And so I guess I just want to encourage people that, you know, this is really a safe group. It's a safe place just to be able to share your story. Um, when you share your story, if you're coming to share your story, don't expect all the answers for your story. Maybe sometimes you don't need answers. Maybe sometimes you just need to share your story. And so, you know, it, it's not a place to get fixed, right? It's just a place to allow healing to happen, allowing your story. And I think the beauty of it, Paul, like you were sharing, you know, I'll even say this, it's not only about, you know, there's stories all over. Paul loves to use musical, you know, use music as stories. We have Pastor Tom, he's gonna show a movie. And, and I love listening to him because he has like, it's kind of, um, I just kind of sit and enjoy movies and eat popcorn and nod, but, but um, Pastor Tom has this way of saying, this is part of the story, you know, and, and I love what he does with that. And so he's going to be sharing, um, you know, but I just think you're going to walk away with relationships and realize, you know what, the boat that I'm in when life gets difficult is not a small boat. Um, I've gotten to know Trudy because even the disabilities and hearing the story of just the challenges in, in living through disabilities, I mean, that helps me grow. And so, you know, I would just say, bring your stories, enjoy one another's stories. Um, as you consider, don't don't be so judgmental, like, no, that's not really happening, but just be grateful that somebody is willing to share their story. But I, it's gonna change. I mean, storytelling changes our hearts, our attitudes towards people. And I just think in this time where, you know, we're hearing people telling us so much about how difficult it is, we just need to be able to share, this is what I'm wrestling with. And, and, um, and you know what, knowing that you're not alone knowing that you're not alone. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Bring, I'm going to bring my sunscreen. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring my surfboard. Um, I definitely will leave my Speedo at home. In fact, I don't have one because, you know, my wife doesn't allow things like that on me. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's always a great time. I love the Oregon coast. It's not Hawaii, but I love the Oregon coast. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim. And I was just going to say, like, one of the things that if you watch this whole video and kind of are going, I'm still, I still don't have my finger on exactly what new wine is or exactly what happens at this retreat. It sounds different. Some of it sounds refreshing. It sounds encouraging. It seems relational. It seems biblical. It seems, you know, fun and engaging. Um, but I, I don't know. I still don't, I can't put my finger on it. So I'm uncomfortable. And I, it's, like a lot of things, you just have to experience it. And so, like, my encouragement would be, uh, there's, there's lots of different ways, as Trudy was saying, to register and to make keep the cost down for how you come. So if you can come for a day, it's very cheap. You can do two meals a day with us. You can do, you know, you can bring your own meal for lunch or something or what have you. There's lots and lots of different ways. And if, honestly, if cost is a is prohibitive for you, like we'd hope you'd reach out to us too and just say, hey, this is something we'd we'd like to be involved in, and uh, I'm not sure we can afford it. And I'm not saying we can pay for you, but we'd love to pray for you and hope that maybe we can find a way for you to be able to come. Um, but I would just encourage you to take that step, say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna show up. I had several staff members do that last year and they said it was foundational for changing the, the last year for them in ministry. Um, they're, they're different people because of what they experienced at the retreat because, and it seemed like small things. When I talked to them about it, it was a conversation they had over dinner one day or a conversation they had on their way walking to the beach with someone they, they barely knew. Um, it just, it is such a great experience and I really just hope people will join us. 
Thank you, friends. And, and thanks for watching this. And please reach out to us. Uh, you can contact us at uh, the Facebook page. The website has contact information. Uh, we look forward to interacting with you. And we hope to see you at the retreat. And uh, in the midst of whatever you're facing, may you find Jesus uh, to be an anchor and a, a friend, a guide, and a comfort through God's spirit. And bless you, all of you, and in Jesus' name. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, blessings to everyone. Thank Goodbye. you.